Hello, hello. Welcome to my kitchen table. I got some mess beside me. This always stays here because I don't have anywhere else to put it. So just, I don't want to talk about it, okay? So in today's video, I wanted to tell you how I come up with my grocery list each week. It's pretty simple, but I find that doing this keeps me organized throughout the week and also organized at the grocery store. First thing I do is I keep just like a running list throughout the week of my to buy items, things that I notice we're out of throughout the week. Just have it listed down somewhere because I'm not gonna be able to remember all of it the day that I'm gonna go to the grocery. I need creamer, we need milk, water, sweet tea, paper towels. I have snacks with a question mark and I know that Jared likes peanut butter crackers so I'm gonna get some of those and strawberries. And then at the top I have listed what we're gonna have for lunch. I like to list out the meals at the top to keep, I don't know, it just helps me like keep my brain organized. It's easier for me to go, okay, we have five meals planned. I know that we're going to have enough food for the week and just writing down a bunch of ingredients and then getting them all home and being like, what am I supposed to do with all this? <laughs> I have made sourdough. We have stuff for chicken wraps already. Um, I don't think that we'll need any lunch meat, but I might pick up a pack. So I'm going to write that down with a question mark. And then I kind of just decide when I get there, if it feels right to pick it up or not. I did ask Jared and I ask him every week what he would like for dinners if he has any requests. Last week he was on it and gave me three things that he wanted and that is what we did. This week though he did not have anything in mind so I'm on my Pinterest board that I use to save recipes and I'm just going to go through it see if anything sounds good see if there's anything that it seems like I already have some ingredients for to try to save a little bit of money. Honestly, we don't keep a lot of excess in the house. Our fridge is damn near empty because it's the end of the week and we've gone through everything that we bought last week to eat. So I'm not huge on like, I need pantry staples because I plan this out so strictly at the beginning of the week, whenever I do my grocery shop, that we always have food. I make sure that we have snacks, lunches, and dinners. For breakfast, we kind of do whatever. I know that we have apple butter and we can have that on some sourdough. I always have a waffle with peanut butter and honey on it. That is my go-to right now. We always have coffee on hand and then we usually have fruit also. So, and always just like a peanut butter sandwich is a fine breakfast, you know? I'm not a big breakfast food person, so I don't do eggs typically or anything like that unless it's a special occasion and I'm feeling crazy. <laughs> so this is my Pinterest board. I don't just use it for dinner recipes. I have everything in here. Thought about trying to organize it a bit more, but that has not happened yet. Saved this week this one pot skillet lasagna and this healthy chicken taco casserole. So I might look into those. I'll go to the recipe and see if it actually is as easy as the title makes it seem. I'm actually not going to go with this because there are a whole lot of ingredients that I don't already have. I'll keep that tab pulled up and we shall see. These are all recipes that I have not done before. I typically do ones that I already know, but I've kind of been feeling monotonous recently. So I want to see if I can find a couple new things. I think that we're going to try this one because I think that we already have the shrimp blackened seasoning. I don't know what that is. Um, I do have butter. I need to get heavy cream anyway because Jared likes it in his coffee and I make a lot of things with heavy cream. I already have tomato paste. I already have sour cream. I need to pick up Parmesan anyway, so that'll be okay. And then corn is uh, cheap. So let's do it. So obviously I'm just going to go through the ingredient list and I just put it on my to buy sheet and then I'll show you how I organize my actual grocery shopping list. And I never do this for garnish BS. <laughs> Probably looks nicer and tastes a little bit better, but the rest of it always goes to waste. So I'm not gonna do that. Okay, cool. So then I'm going to write at the top of my page what the dish is. So I know what I'm doing. And also since I go from my Pinterest board, instead of just doing a search, it just helps me because I know where the recipe is. There have been many times that I've bought a bunch of ingredients, haven't written down what the recipe is actually called, get home and don't even remember the recipe or can't find it again. Let's keep moving on. This crock pot chicken Alfredo is super easy. I've done it before. It's delicious. We love it. It's good leftover. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up and write it down. 
Okay, cool. And then I'll go ahead and do creamy beef and shells, which is basically like the cheese lasagna hamburger helper, but um, probably better for you, I hope. It's delicious, it is easy, and then we'll have shrimp, chicken, and ground beef, because I like to mix up our protein a little bit. And I probably wouldn't do the shrimp cavatappi, cavatappi if we didn't already have shrimp because seafood can be a little expensive, but we had shrimp from Jambalaya and we have a lot left over. So it'll be put to good use. Pasta shells, and then I'll put a question mark next to it. I'll look in the pantry and see if I actually need to buy more. And this also uses heavy cream. So that's another thing that I'll use the heavy cream that I'm gonna buy for. Oh, and this also uses, hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up half and half because I don't know if the thing of heavy cream that I'm gonna buy is gonna be enough of to use in all recipes. Also, the recipe calls for half and half, but honestly, if I weren't unsure if the heavy cream that I'm gonna buy would stretch, I would just use heavy cream. For onion granules, I don't really know what that means. I use onion powder. You can tell me if that is wrong or if it makes that big of a difference. We have had this before and we like it, so. Okay, so I believe that my list is made. Let me show you what it looks like. So up at the top, I have, like you saw before, sandwiches and chicken wraps for lunches. of the blackened shrimp cavatappi, tappy, crock pot chicken alfredo and creamy beef and shells, just to keep everything organized in my brain. And then I have all of the ingredients written down, question marks on things that I, may or may not get slash are confused of what they actually are. But let's move on to how I organize my list. So first things first, I'm going to look in the fridge and the pantry and see if these things that have question marks need to actually be bought. Oh, actually I'm gonna Google black and seasoning really quick. So I don't know what that means. Like, can you just buy? Okay, cool. It looks like the Kroger brand does at least make blackened seasoning. But even if I go there and I don't see it, I do have everything that are in these seasoning mix recipes for it. So we were good there. I also need to know if I have enough pasta shells and lunch meat. Sorry, you can hear the dogs. Also the dishwasher is running. I forgot to mention that earlier. I apologize for that, but I needed to clean my dishes. So we're just gonna ignore that whirring noise and the little doggy paw nail taps. I can't remember what I said. We have a third package left of roast beef and the chicken lunch meat that I buy. I don't eat the roast beef really, but I do put it on Jared sandwiches. So since that'll just be for him, I think about a third package is fine because we probably will have a mix of sandwiches and chicken wraps and maybe leftovers. So I'm going to just get turkey or chicken lunch meat, whatever they have. I don't have shells, but I do have eight ounces of elbow macaroni. So I'm gonna use that instead of buying a whole new thing because it's pasta, it's all pasta, so that doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna keep my question mark next to half and half because I might wind up getting just like a big thing of heavy cream and not having to get a half and half, or I'll get a smaller thing of heavy cream and I don't wanna forget that I also need half and half if I do that. This is how I organize my list. And I showed this in a video that I did back in December, I think, but it was like a vlog. So I write grocery at the top. So that way everyone knows that that's where we are. You know, if somebody forgets, they can look over and see grocery. Oh yeah, I'm here. And I go through my list and I number them based on how my Kroger is set up. So all of the produce, I would put one, I put a one next to strawberries. And then I basically just go down the list and number in sections based on where I will be throughout my visit, if that makes sense. So I do produce first, and then I would go into the bread aisle if we needed buns, which is right next to the tortillas and the salsa. So if I were getting one of those, I would put a two next to it. Pasta's over there too. So that would be a two, which I will mark next to the cavatappi and the rigatoni that I'm gonna get. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. And then I will write it all down in order so that way I don't have something in the middle of my list that I passed at the beginning of my visit. You get me. Now I will move on to like the meat and dairy type stuff. So that's all along the back wall at my store. So I'll go through my first rounds of aisles and then I'll go along the back wall and work my way like back up if that makes any sense whatsoever. We'll do ground beef, chicken breast. And then last 
lastly, I'll pick up water because water is so heavy, it makes it really difficult for me to push the cart. I believe that everything is numbered. So I'll flip back over to my grocery list and write everything down. This kind of seems, what's the word I'm looking for? Redundant, because I've already written all of the stuff down here. So why wouldn't I just go off this list? But it really makes it a lot easier to have it in order, I promise. And I just like having it in my hands because I just set it like in the little thing where you would put babies. <laughs> and then I don't have to open my phone, go to the right screen or unlock my phone and stuff like that. I just realized that we need honey. Um, I forgot to put that on my list. So let's see, where would that, I don't even know where that is. I'm gonna make a note of it up here and I'll have to look on the Kroger app and see where that is, but I have it written down. Before I get in line, I always look through and make sure that I have everything. So I shouldn't forget it. So there is my entire list for the entire week and I know what I'm making and I will pick things up in order so I, I won't have to be at the grocery any longer than I have to. Okay, so that is pretty much how I do it. I hope that it was helpful, maybe. I spent a lot of time in my early adult years wondering how people knew what they were supposed to buy at the grocery, knew what they made throughout the week, meal planned, and I finally developed a system that worked for me, but it took me a long time. So I hope that it was helpful if you were in the same boat as that. If not helpful, then at the very least, good background noise for you. I'm gonna go buy these things now. Spend money, sadly. Well, first I'm gonna go to the gym and then I'm gonna go to the grocery. So if you see me and I look tired or disheveled and um, moist, um, <laughs> it's because I was working on my fitness. So don't look at me, talk to me. Yeah, okay. Thanks so much for being here. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.